Okay, our next presenter is Mr. Abrisal Andrew Ang. I believe Mr. Abrisal is already here. Okay. Um, hi, uh, good morning, everybody. Okay, so, well, before we listen to his talk, let me first read his short biography. Mr. Abrisal Andrew Ang is currently the Vice President of PT Samudra Mandiri Sentosa Cantuna in Bitung, Indonesia. He has a Master of Business Administration degree in Finance and Operation Management from Wichita State University, Kansas, United States of America. And he has spent the last 12 years in fisheries industry from fishing to processing and marketing and he involved in several NGO focusing in fisheries improvement and his main focus in, fish in fisheries include sustain sustainability socioeconomic of coastal fisheries fishing technology innovation in water product water or waste or waste products and his health quite important position in several companies before this current position. Include director of PT Fajar Flores Flamboyan, director of PT Bitang Mandiri Bersaudara, and the list is going on. So we have no time to read all these uh, positions he has held before. So today, Mr. Abrisal will share his experience through his talk entitled Turning Waste to gold. So let us hand the floor over to Mr. Abrisal Andrew Ang, who's going to start his presentation. Mr. Abrisal, it's all yours. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can okay. see and hear you okay. Okay, thank you. Um, I was having some technical difficulties around here. The internet around it is sometimes have some problem, but uh, let me try my best to um, Header, what what we are doing today. Um, I will share my screen. Um, can you see it? Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Yes. Um, let me give a brief introduction about uh, what, what, what I do and then who we are. I... So today I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, turning waste to gold and how can we actually do some research that has value to the industry and our livelihoods. Um, let me give a brief introduction, uh, introduction about our company to you. We are a fully integrated a uh, civil company from boat building, processing, fishing, and also the distributions. SMS is a part of a group um, that operates about 400 boats across Indonesian water, catching from pelagic, demersal to crustacea. Uh, we are also deeply involved in uh, aquaculture, uh, from farming exotic fish like you heard of dragonfish, arowana, uh, prawn, freshwater fish to high value consumed seafood uh, like grouper and lobster. SMS is one of the company, uh, a tuna cannery and processing plant located in Bitung, uh, northern part of Sulawesi, a factory with a daily capacity of uh, 150 metric tons a day. We produce canned tuna um, exported to most of the country in Europe. Uh, United States, Australia, in some Asia, and uh, we exported most of our katsu obusi. Uh, you can see it in the in the picture, a dried smoked fish, hana katsu. If you eat uh, takoyaki, that 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 is where the material come from. And our group employ over four thousand fishermen and three thousand factory workers all over Indonesia. And to be to make it more interesting, I will just show you a, a footage of uh, our, how our fishermen uh, in action.
So um, this is how we fish a, a pollen line fishery. Uh, a, a, the a claim as the most sustainable way of fishing. We take pride in this fishing method has been here for generations, and this is trying to. Um, so it has become the main, the most favorite product for retail market in some of the country in Europe. Uh, In that footage, um, you can see all over the about 35 fishermen caught about 12 tons of uh, a fish in 10 minutes. Uh, what a way of fishing! Min many fishing enthusiasts uh, told us it, it could be hours to wait for one fish to bite, but not for our fishermen apparently. Uh, let me then move into what I'm supposed to speak today. I'm representing the fish industry to call on uh, academic stakeholder to help us. Uh, with the solution over the global problems uh, the fisheries industry are facing. Following the growth of global uh, populations and the subsequent rapid increase in urbanization, fishery and aquaculture production has seen a massive uh, increase uh, driven mainly by the development of fishing technology uh, done mostly by university students and some of the researchers. Um, according to a remarkable increase in the amount of fish uh, used, there is also a fish waste. If you see in the in the in the in the, in the, the numbers, the global fishery production in 2020 is about 180 million metric tons. Indonesia alone is about 10 percent of it, 23 million metric tons. And you could see the problem lies here. Indonesian fishery waste estimate is 15 million metric tons a year. Most of this will, will, will go into fish meal. That is priced as 50 cent a kilo. Um, in our factory, we fully utilize all of our, our, our waste uh, from the fish. But don't get me wrong, we are a zero waste company, but most of the fish meal goes into a fish powder, a very lazy or simple way just to get rid of that, 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 uh, that waste. And uh, we just need a better a turnkey uh, solution, turnkey innovation to turn this into something else. Let me give you more into detail. Um, from, from tuna, we can derive uh, four products from this. Most of the cannery, most, most of the processor uh, are producing this. Four products from a round, whole round tuna, it goes as can as the main product, or second, a fresh tuna loin, fresh tuna steak, uh, that's what you eat in sashimi, yeah. Um, and then the the waste goes into fish meal powder or crude fish oil, um, including the, the skin, the bones, the heads, the fish are then processed to this uh, lower uh, lower value um, uh, product. It could be sold about for maybe for about a dollar a kilo. Um, the fish oil could actually work fifty percent more than the fish meal. Um, then we might be able to make it two, twice or three times more valuable they, uh, by refining them into organic uh, fertilizer. Um, but that's the most we can, what, what we can get. In the meantime, in the meanwhile, uh, in Iceland, you're actually turning fish waste at, for at least 10 times the value we can get, or maybe 100 times. They, they do have a strategy right now in Iceland to get more value from the traditional waste stream than from fillet. The School of Fishery in St. John's actually work with the industry and focus on getting the most value from the entire fish. Uh, that's an entire paradigm shift uh, for them and the industry as a whole. Uh, they plan to get more for, uh, uh, from the oils, from the skins, from the heads, from the liver to go into what? You can see in the picture pharmaceutical, nutritional, uh, biomedical type applications, skin care, you name it. Uh, by using more of the fish byproduct, um, the, the part that the fish normally go into garbage uh, is a part of Iceland effort to make more money with less fish. That's what we need to do with tuna. So I'm calling for all the stakeholders in the academy, especially in our country, to, to, to do something with this. Um, to increase the value, we have uh, we have the, 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 the goods ready for, for you to, 
to do the, the research on. We have the skin ready, we have the, the bones ready, we have the fissure ready and everything. And I'm, I, I'm, I'm actually proud of the of the the way our university is, city is reaching out to in this in the industry and ask for inputs this will save a lot of time and cost from us from doing uh, something that is not uh, valuable or even has something to do with, uh, uh, what do you call it uh, the benefit to the industry and then the, the livelihoods of our, our life so I think that that is how uh, I, I named uh, I, the topic turning waste to gold, not just turning waste to something uh, useful, but that's valuable as gold um, that we need to work together for it. And then if you want, if you need more problem to solve um, from us, uh, additional problem from uh, capture fishery, we are, we are having some problem with light bait uh, replacement for our polling line. Um, we need some replacement for it. Um, in Japan, they found something uh, that to replace the, the live baits. Um, I don't know what, but that they, they're using some material to attract the fish to go out from the, uh, from the depth of the water to go to the surface and then they, they can have a feeding frenzy. And then potential fishing ground predict prediction tools. Um, also predator dissuasive device for tuna fishery. We are having a lot of problem with the uh, pilot whales and now we don't know how to chase away the whales without uh, killing them. So um, that that is from me, and I hope it, it will give a little bit uh, uh, more more value to, to our uh, conference today. Uh, I'm thankful for this, and uh, we as a SMS uh, thankful for the, the the invitation. Thank you again, Mr. Moderator. Oh, thank you very much for such an interesting talk, Mr. Abrisal. So the question for Mr. Abrisal, Andrew Ang will be collected and will be forwarded to him and will be responded by writing. Is that correct? If I'm not mistaken? Okay. Thank you again, Mr. Abrisal, Andrew Ang. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.